So this is a motor choke out of a treadmill. If you're gonna run an SCR voltage controller as a way to power your treadmill motor, it is required to run one of these if you want that motor to have any kind of longevity. I've gotten a lot of questions and comments on my YouTube channel saying, can I make my own? Is there a way that I could build one of these? Or do you know where I can get one that is inexpensive because the ones they're finding are very expensive? Well, if one comes in your treadmill, great. I have several of these from parting out treadmills. But if you don't have one and you can't find one used, what are your options? Well, I decided to conduct a little experiment and see if I could build one out of a microwave transformer. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. This is a motor choke. And this is an AC transformer. This is used to convert AC power from one voltage to another. You can use it to take a low voltage and step it up to a high voltage. You can use it to take a high voltage and step it down to a low voltage. This is used to filter out power spikes. Now, it seems like they don't do anything similar at all. But when you look at their components, they look very similar. Other than size, I see the same thing here. I see a wire coil and a wire coil, and I see a ferrite body. So what's going on here? Are they the same? Are they different? Well, they are definitely different. But what I want to find out is if I can take one of these, take it apart add a single coil of wire in it instead of the double coil that it comes with and convert it into one of these. Now, the first question you may be wondering is why I would even mess with recoiling this. Well, when you're working with DC current, the best type of wire is stranded wire and the coil inside this is solid wire. Now, don't get me wrong, the coil that's in here is solid wire as well but stranded wire is going to work the best. What we want to do is put a heavy gauge wire, preferably stranded, in this body, a single coil instead of a double coil like this transformer, and hopefully create this. Now, you may be wondering, why would I even be messing with that? This is probably going to cost me money, so why would I make a DIY version of this? Because you can get this for free. This is a transformer out of a microwave. I ran an ad on uh, Craigslist and on Facebook Marketplace and said, hey, I'm looking for broken microwaves, Will Holloway. And in the matter of about three weeks, I picked up mm, 10 or 12 of them. And they all had various size transformers. This is pretty average. Some were a little bigger, some were a little smaller. And there's lots of things you can do with a microwave transformer. So that's why I was looking for those parts and pieces. If you end up going the microwave route, be very careful. There is a large capacitor in a microwave that if it has a charge in it, the uh, shock from that component is deadly. There's also a ceramic piece on the magneto that is made of an element that uh, is not good for you. It gets into your lungs, can cause cancer and stuff. Um, holding the ceramic or being around the ceramic is not an issue, but if the ceramic chips or breaks and particles are released, then there's a problem. So you definitely want to be careful when taking apart a microwave. But if you can get a free microwave and you can take this piece out, then there's a good chance that we will be able to make this into this. Now, I refuse to be one of those YouTube channels that glosses over everything and tells you, oh yeah, do this and it'll work. If this doesn't work, by the end of this video, you're going to know it. I'm going to post this video either way, whether it works or doesn't work. We're going to try a couple of different configurations, and we're going to see if making this out of this is something we can do, or if it's just not worth the time and effort. So in building a choke out of a transformer, the first question is, how do I take this apart? And that's really pretty simple. You can see this line right here on the side. That was a weld that was just a surface weld. So what I ended up doing was I put this in the bench vise and took a hacksaw to it. Didn't have to cut very deep. 
And then once I had a little bit of a cut, I just took a cold chisel and was able to split this connection. And then I flipped it around and did the same thing on the other side. Now, I could have shown you that in this video, but YouTube is full of videos showing people taking these apart. Uh, oftentimes, these are used to make uh, powerful electromagnets. And if you look at any of those videos, they will show the process of taking this apart. Once you have those welds split, this top piece comes off. Now, the coils that are inside are, there's a lot of glue and cardboard and various things. I found the easiest way to get them out was to support the coils under this outside edge and then use my press to press the core out of the coils. Once you do that, you can remove the cardboard and the excess junk, and then it makes it pretty easy to use the coils to slide them in and take them out. This coil is the fine wire, and it absolutely has to be removed. If you were going to make a choke out of just this right here, just using the coil that comes in the transformer, and you left this coil in place, every single time the power was shut off, the magnetic field created by this bottom coil made of larger wire would collapse and that would cause high voltage to induce into this fine wire coil. So there's the potential to have thousands of volts coming out of this if you left it in place. So that's, that's actually how a transformer works. You have voltage either coming in on fine wire and uh, when the field collapses, it reduces the voltage into the larger wire or vice versa. If the voltage is coming into the large wire, when the field collapses, it increases the voltage into the smaller wire. So no matter what you do, this has to be removed. Now we're faced with a choice. We can use the coil that came with this unit, or we can replace this with heavy gauge stranded wire. And I've actually done experiments with both. This is my DIY motor choke. This is heavy duty 16 gauge wire that I just wrapped around. I took three laps the full distance and then I put the top back on. Now I currently have the top held with tape. In the long run, you're gonna wanna fire up the welder and reconnect it permanently. But for the sake of testing, just a couple of wraps of tape was enough to get the job done. If we leave this here and we put the top back on, this will also act as a choke in theory. Now this top piece is very important. Top piece here that's been taped on, this piece here. The reason that is important is because when this magnetic field is created, right now, if I were to put power to this and put something metal on top, it's gonna stick. It's an electromagnet but we want it to be a choke, not an electromagnet. And so by putting the plate on top, that connects the poles for the magnetic field. And this is creating an electromagnetic field within itself, but it's not a magnetic field that anything else is gonna stick to. So here I'm demonstrating the magnetic field, which is a key component in eliminating the power spikes. So as you can see, as I was lifting the steel off, it was trying to pick up this transformer body. So that shows that this is creating a magnetic field and that field, like I said, is what helps clean the power. So now if we take and we put the cap on top, like that, it does not matter that it is not actually attached. It's making contact. Obviously, if I was gonna use this as a choke, I would need to weld it back together. But for the sake of this experiment, just having the cap on top is going to complete the shape of the steel body and allow the magnetic field to flow through the steel instead of creating a, an excess field around it. So let's go ahead and power back up. <laughs> And as you can see, there's no magnetic field that I can 
to get this to stick to. I'm sure you heard when I first turned it on with this cap on here that it made a humming sound. And that's because this is not secured firmly to the body. Had this been welded into place the way it's supposed to be, that humming is not there. It's similar to the clacking sound that I was getting when I was touching this here. So once you have that firmly in place and welded down, it's not going to do that. So we now have four options. No choke, the DIY stranded wire choke, the transformer coil choke, and of course, the treadmill motor choke designed to filter out power spikes. So how are we gonna test these to find out how they work and find out which one is the best? I am not an electrical engineer. I don't have fancy equipment that allows me to properly test these and find out which one is going to be best at filtering out spikes. But what I do have is the ability to observe. And that is what I'm going to do to test these DIY motor chokes. The process will be simple. I'm going to set up an SCR voltage controller. I'm going to hook it up to a motor. I'm going to turn the SCR voltage controller up to about two-thirds and then I'm going to turn it on. Now that sudden loading of power going to two-thirds speed is going to create some sparking inside the motor. That's normal even when you are running a choke. But the question is how much? There should be a vast difference between no choke and these choking options. And I'm gonna film that sparking so that we get a comparison as you can see from the video there is some differences between no choke and running these three chokes i want to point out first and foremost how important a choke is if you watch the video the section with no choke sparks horribly as it is starting up, and then it continues to spark even after it reaches the desired RPM. Now, the other three chokes, the two DIY versions and the factory version, their sparking is minimal to non-existent once they reach the desired RPM. So that is a very important distinction. This is why a choke is so important. If you are not running a choke, that constant sparking is going to significantly decrease the life of that motor. It's no wonder that you hear people complain about an SCR voltage controller burning out their motor. Because without a choke, you're going to get lots of that sparking and the days of your motor's life are numbered. So this is my conclusion. Obviously, no choke, bad idea. This DIY choke, it's okay. You can see from the video, there's still quite a few sparks. Uh, it's not the best option, but it does eliminate the continuation of sparks. So it is going to help with the life of the motor. Here's the problem with this setup. Normally, when you're dealing with a factory type coil, the coil is super tight and or is epoxied together. In the case of this coil, each loop has the ability to move a little bit. And that actually caused this unit to hum when it was being used. Now, a little extra noise in the shop, no big deal. But my concern is that humming is coming from vibration. So these wires are vibrating. That means the wires are going to be rubbing against this metal body. And there is a good chance that that vibration is going to cause you to wear through the insulation on the wires and ultimately result in a direct short between the wire and the body of the transformer. And at that point, we run the risk of burning things up. So unless you did something to tie this coil together, either glued all these wires together, applied an epoxy resin to fill the gaps, something like that, this is not a good option. I do not recommend this at all. This functioned remarkably well. 
I was actually very surprised as to how well this worked. It's almost as good as this right here. So as a DIY low dollar option, I think we can make a go of this. The argument can be made that this will get the job done. Now, I did notice on this, compared to these other two, that RPMs dropped a little bit, and that's because this coil has a little bit of resistance to it, so that's going to reduce your voltage and ultimately reduce your speed. But as a DIY option, I still think this is a pretty good way to go and will work for somebody that can't find one of these. Once again, I cannot stress enough how dangerous it would be to run this coil without removing this coil right here. You are playing with fire if you leave this installed in this and try and use this as a choke. Now, big surprise, this one right here worked the best. And that makes sense. This is designed to be a motor choke. This is designed to be a transformer. At least that was its original function. So it stands to reason that this is going to be better at doing its job than the modified version of this was at doing its job. Ultimately, if you've got one of these, or you can get one of these, run one of these. If you need to go this direction, you can do it, and I, I would give it a, a pretty good grade. I would say this gets a, a B. Solid effort, it's going to be functional, it's not as good as this, but it's, it's not too bad. This is not an option. Like I said, don't go this route because of the potential dangers of wearing through the insulation on this wire. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.